You know, you know. smoking is a leading cause of preventable death. Why are we the target? Why are we the target? Advertising our community to artists with this vaping garbage. Yeah, they tryna take us away, they tryna take us away, they tryna smoke us away until we gone. Yeah, they tryna take us away, they tryna take us away, they tryna smoke us away until we Very important, we're not against, you know, um, those who smoke or those who use tobacco. We're against the tobacco industry, you know, that is that are intentionally targeting and marketing a deadly product when used as intended, kills folks. Which is totally, 100% preventable. When we talk about tobacco use. So. Thank you so much, Stan. You know, um, I've been pastoring for about 24 years. And I probably have done 500 funerals or more or less, somewhere around that. And every funeral that I've done, there's a word of redemption. There's a word of of saying, hey, you know, even if the person was not the, the greatest person in the world, you, you always find something good to say about that person because they're a child of God. But in this case, <laughs> in, this case in this case, I have nothing good to say about the deceased. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. And if someone rolls a stone, it will roll back on them. A lying tongue hates those it hurts, and a flattering mouth brings ruin. The tobacco industry is deceitful. They are evil. For they have created a product now some will say, well, tobacco comes from the ground, and it does. But they've added this thing called menthol to make that tobacco more of a killer. They've added menthol so that it will deceive, to deceive the minds and the bodies of those who use it as to making them feel that it is something that they want and something that they need. And we have been a people that have been deceived, abused, misused, had our rights stripped from us, and now we got to deal with this killer, huh. menthol. To be alive, grateful to see that we are finally putting this to rest because when I was a child and living in the community that I live in still now, in my aunt's house, it was my aunt's house, it was my mother's sister. And cool, cool cigarettes, you know, was a thing in my house. Menthol had to be that flavor in that generation just before me. It wasn't just the flavor of the cigarettes, it was the, the, the wanting to be seen, it was the popular, it was making sure that people knew that you had that brand or, you know, a certain brand that you walked around with, you know, and I have memories of going to the store, being sent to the store to go and get the cigarettes for her, you know, and sometimes I would come back with the wrong one and she would be mad and I have to go back and I have to get the one that she usually gets. But I say all of that because we have seen the destruction that has happened in our communities with people of color over our lifetime. Me being 66, I have seen it for a very long time. It's painful to see people go through COPD. And, and gasping for breath, not being able to breathe. It is painful. It is painful to see people go through cancer. Cancer is a cruel mistress. It really is. It takes its time and it devours people slowly and it leaves you feeling bitter because you can't do anything to help. Hello everybody, my name is Jason Brady. I go to the University at Buffalo. 
Um, a month ago, I had a, I had a death in the family. My godfather had passed away. And before he passed away, um, he gave me money for my graduation. He gave me about $100. And I remember getting the $100 and saying like, oh, you know, I could do a lot with this. And I bought a pre-roll with weed and grub inside of it. Tobacco's in the weed, you know what I'm saying? So, um, when he died as well, I was in the middle of rolling up. I looked up my left and I see the text that says, you know, he passed away. And ever since that moment, I have not touched a single, a single weed, cigarette, anything like that at all. Like I've been free. And so I just feel like it shouldn't have had to be that much of a difficult, you know, situation for me to get there. You know, I should have never even been in that situation to begin with. I should have been hanging out with people who are not smoking, not doing all that type of stuff. And so, you know, I think th things like this, you know, uh, Having people to just, you know, not even have access to the cigarettes in, in the first place is very important. So that, that's, why I, I, that's what I wanted to share. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Giovanna. Um, I stand here today not only a supporter of this crucial cause, but as someone who has experienced firsthand the devastating impact of menthol cigarettes. When I was just 16 years old, I lost my mother to small cell lung cancer a disease that claimed her life when she was only 41 years old herself. She was my best friend. She still is in so many ways. She lost her life after just a short seven month battle. My sweet younger brothers, they were only 12 and nine years old themselves. When they lost their mother, menthol cigarettes played a significant role in that. It wasn't just the addiction, it was the illusion that menthol made smoking easier, smoother, somehow less harmful. But we know the truth. There's nothing smooth about watching someone you love fight for their life against a completely preventable disease. Ending the sale of menthol flavored tobacco is not just a policy change. It's a life-saving measure. Menthol cigarettes target our communities, our youth, and the vulnerable, drawing them into a cycle of addiction and often to tragic outcomes. Like my mom, who was just 11 years old when she smoked her first cigarette and smoked for 30 years until she passed. We cannot continue to let this happen. If we can stop just one more family from experiencing the pain that mine did, if we can prevent one more young person from picking up their first menthol cigarette, then this fight will be worth it. I truly believe so. Together, we have the power to change the story for my mom and for so many others. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Terry Alford. A hundred years ago, I used to be the director of the Erie Niagara Tobacco Free Coalition uh, out of Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center. Uh, I did uh, that for close to eight to 10 years there. Um, over the course of that time, one of my duties that I always liked was uh, working with the gentleman who was known as the Marlboro Man and the Wisdom Man. His name was David Gerlitz. He was a model, right? Strapping man, okay? Real man, right? if you say that. Um, and he had, uh, after losing his brother to tobacco-related illness, he decided to make his life, dedicate his life to fighting against tobacco. The reason why was uh, he always told the story about going on photo shoots uh, with the company and usually in the company they would send executives with them and the other models. And um, he knows that during breaks between photo shoots he and other models and other people be smoking. But none of the executives were ever smoking, right? And one day he asked the executive, you know, uh, why don't you use the products that, you know, we advertise? Well, what's, what's up with that? And uh, their reply was, which, he, which was substantiated in tobacco documents, was uh, tobacco use. We reserve, the, uh, we reserve that right to the poor, uh, the stupid, and the black. Let that resonate, let that sink in. Uh, I hate the tobacco industry. I'm unapologetic when I say that, and I say that because of a personal loss. I've lost a, a number of people, but I just two weeks ago celebrated what would have been this 68th birthday of my late wife, uh, who started smoking methylated tobacco products uh, uh, back in when she was 12 years old after the death of her mother. Uh, people like her were heavily uh, promoted to, and that the, the industry continues to promote heavily to kids, as we know that, right? But. 
tried as she must to her whole life, especially during the years I was the director of the tobacco control programs in the city, she could not stop. And eventually it got to the point where she started having heart attacks. She had uh, a quadruple uh, surgery to save her life. And subsequent in 2012, and subsequently had heart attacks every year after that, okay? Up until the final heart attack in 2015, uh, where she uh, lingered for a week and, and eventually passed. One of the things she used to relay back much with life to young people, especially our grandkids, nephews and nieces was, uh, once you start using tobacco, it's hard to stop. Uh, and the best way to stop is never to start at all, right? But the way the tobacco industry is, is, is made is it's always going to be predatory, targeting our young people. And that is evil, okay? So when I say the, to the back of the nose, I know this is a day that we are here to uh, funeralize and utilize the methylated tobacco industry. I say to hell with tobacco and methylated tobacco. That's my time. So hello everyone, my name is Jasmine. I am a healthcare advocate with the Healthcare Education Project. And I just wanna shed the light to the preventive work we've been doing with the youth in the city of Buffalo. So uh, Mr. Stan, he came uh, with me to speak to a, a group of middle school and high school students in the Young Women's Empowerment Academy a couple of months back. And he really just showed them how the marketing is targeted towards the youth, especially in black and brown communities. And it gave the children the opportunity to see it and they acknowledged it. With that knowledge, they were then able to create their own social media campaign. They made a PSA and TikTok and iMovie. Um, they made some um, digital campaigns as well, like with images that they use Canva, saying that they will not be the next uh, replacement smokers. They make t-shirts that say uh, no vape for me and they were also able to then communicate that message to middle school students at the Della Van Grider Community Center. So that just shows the work that we're doing. Not only are we involving the youth, but now they're able to be out here as part of the coalition as well. And then from that, one of the youth that were in um, the Young Women's Empowerment Academy, she just presented on a global platform this week. And so she uh, practiced, me and her, we were going over the questions so she can talk about the dangers of vaping in our community in the city of Buffalo. And she was on that panel with some college students as well. So that was a really great opportunity for her to not only speak about her experience when she goes into her corner stores and how she feels like the vape should not be next to the candy, and she said that multiple times and people were like, wow, it shouldn't. And we really just need to put that emphasis on it and that's out of the mouth of the youth, so. My name is Amanda Huxel and I work on health systems for Tobacco-Free Western New York housed at Roswell Park, a program of the New York State Bureau of Tobacco Control. Before I share my story, I want to give a special shout out to my dear friend, Stan Martin. Let's give him another round of applause, please who has devoted his work to rid the Buffalo community of the presence of menthol products. This fight is far from easy, and I'm grateful to be a part of this movement. Big Tobacco will not win against the power of the people. When Stan and myself, our partners, community champions, and youth came together for the first menthol funeral in Western New York in 2023, it was a truly magical moment. I also want to shout out a fearless youth leader from the city of Buffalo who I worked closely with for about three years, Jaisha Cannon, who took her passion for tobacco control to Albany, speaking with our senators and assembly members in effort to create meaningful policy change. I've seen firsthand how menthol has impacted lives of those I love, family, and friends. I grew up in a family of smokers. And I can vividly remember when I was six years old, I begged my grandmother to stop smoking. Seneca was the brand she smoked, and menthol was the flavor. I said, Grandma, I don't want you to die. I need you. And from that moment on, she started her quit journey, and to this day has been successful since. Menthol is not just a flavor. It's not a chosen preference. It's a way for big tobacco to attract and addict smokers 
to their deadly products. Menthol tobacco products pose serious threats to public health and together we have and will continue to fight for the health of our community and the next generation of leaders. More than half of youth ages 12 to 17 who smoke use menthol cigarettes. And the average age of a new smoker here in New York State is just 13 years old. No matter how you look at it, there's nothing just about it. And that's why my passion personally will continue to fuel my dedication to reducing menthol-related health disparities here, working alongside our community, providing education, and standing up against the industry that is seemingly trying to kill our friends and family. Thank you. My name is Annette Colton. I grew up in a household where uh, there was a lot of chain smoking. My grandfather at that time, he chain smoked, but he did not know the damage that was being done. I lost my sister uh, with two bouts of breast cancer. My brothers, they decide, three of them decided to follow the pattern of my grandfather and start to smoking. So at this point, I don't know if any really noticed there is a casket behind me. That is where my sister, my brothers, my father, that's where they ended up. Unfortunately, I also got cancer. And from that point on, my mission was to fight, to uh, make them understand, you don't have to put those cigarettes up to your lips to get cancer. I never once smoked. My sister never once smoked. But we are around smokers, which means we got the secondhand smoke. And my grandfather figured he was doing a justice by not smoking in the house, but he smoked in the car. And every time we got in that car, we're now getting thirdhand smoke. So for those of you that are thinking, well, I don't smoke, it's not gonna affect me, guess what? you are and for those of you that smoke and have children love your children much more than that tobacco we understand it is an addiction but look at your children and realize you don't want them to go through cancer i didn't just watch the majority of my family die i had to go through it as well so i'm saying don't let your children your friends your family members end up in one of these. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ebony White. I am the CEO and founder of Align Consulting, where I specialize in community health and community engagement in an equitable way. So I partner, and I've had the opportunity to partner with Stan Martin and Consulting and Tobacco Free Kids on socializing and making sure that we speak to directly our young people, making them aware of the tactics in the matrix, the use of the big tobacco industry, utilizing our current social determinants of health hemisphere to give us something that we deem to be a coping mechanism for us, but in fact is actually killing us. We have committed ourselves to educating our young people that they understand the landscape and the social context of the tobacco industry, how they are making it more attractive, it tastes better, but you're literally utilizing something to end your life, shorten your life, the quality of your life. Um, I come from a family like many others where smoking was a social thing. Being able to do that was a part of your social life. My grandfather fathered 15, ch fathered 15 children, and of those 15 children, he outlived six of them who all died prematurely, and they did not have to die that way. So I'm committed, as well as many of you are here today, committed to not letting the future go up in smoke not going up and menthol smoke, not letting it go up. We matter. And that's why we're asking our Common Council to make a decision to create a no menthol buffalo for us to save our futures and to save our lives. Thank you. Normally this is just the receiving part of the service where people will go to look at the casket and have some memories of those who, are, who have succumbed to tobacco, cancer. Uh, these are the byproducts of this great deficit in our community. They took more lives than bullets in any war that we've ever been in. 
So as you view the remains of your loved one uh, in that casket, I saw my grandfather. I saw my auntie. I don't know about who you may have saw, but the reality is real. And we need to focus on how we can correct those things that have caused us hurt in all of our lives. I'm Reverend Mark Blue, pastor of the Second Baptist Church, but I'm also the president of the Buffalo NAACP. And we do know that cancer kills, menthol kills, second, third hand smoke kills. It stunts growth. It causes families to hurt. It causes families to miss loved ones. But I'm here to share with you that the NAACP has taken the stand against menthol. It is one of the things that we want to continue to do because it affects those who are the most affected, and that is our black and brown community. We have been targeted generation after generation. If you look at any of the commercials that are out right now, they're targeting black people, they're targeting our minorities, and they're also making it so smoking becomes more habitual. They're making it so smoking becomes more, it looks like enjoyable. They don't do this in the white communities. They do it in the black communities. They advertise it where candy is, where potato chips are. They advertise it on the lower level so we can look. But I have news for you. In 1980, in 2023, the FDA has proposed a ban on smoke, uh, a ban on menthol. But what has happened is the legislation has not passed. We need to talk to our legislators, talk to our decision makers. Even City Hall has the ability to ban menthol in our communities. Brothers and sisters, it's not cute. It's not perfume or cologne. It leaves stains not only on your teeth, but if you're smoking in a room, it leaves a stain on the walls and on the ceiling. Why would you want that to be a part of your DNA? And why do we see people who put on cologne, who wear perfume, and who smoke? Do they think they're covering up the smokiness? All they're doing is making themselves look nasty and smell nasty. I don't have anything against smokers, but I do have something against those who promote it, those who make money off of it, those who try to marginalize us and profit off of us. It's time. It's time for us to stand up. It's time for us to tell our legislators that smoking ain't cool. That we need to make sure our children are learning from this. Because if we don't stop them now, they're looking at the next generation of smokers. Our brothers and sisters, in this way, let us be mindful that we can end funerals right here right now we don't have to wait for the eschatological future we can do something about this now and that is to end the sale of menthol flavored products in the city of buffalo both tobacco and and vaping and to do it now um the name of this poem is called roll it up so, mm -hmm. kind of want you to just rock with me a little bit. Roll it up. Light it up. Inhale. Roll it up. Light it up. Inhale. Too lazy to work with their own hands. Black bodies stolen from the motherland. Working, hunched over and bent. Shoulders? Nah, we stand on the backs of giants. Hot, angry, inwardly defiant. But the threat of the whip? kept them in line so don't slip the threat of the whip were kings and queens from sun up to sundown tobacco buried deep in blood soaked grounds they hold and cured tobacco leaves none of their efforts created a black money tree and when the shackles came off their feet it left them to question man how are we gonna eat 
No 40 acres, no mule, no reparations, no free schools. But in a land where cotton was king, tobacco also got them what finer things. Tobacco picked by our ancestors benefited their oppressors. Now tobacco benefited privileged predecessors. They reap what black hands sold, the generational wealth, and they byproduct of generational health. Yes, cancer caused by secondhand smoke, voices in the background screen. Take that Newport outside so the baby don't choke. That toxin seeping through their skin, asthma, respiratory, ear infections, grandmother's protection blowing smoke in the baby's face. That old wives tell that craziness was definitely fake. Now we know better, but do we do better? Black babies and Mothers still at risk, black maternal health precarious, and part of it is those little white cancer sticks, but still we roll it up, light it up, inhale, roll it up, light it up, inhale. And how did we get here addicted to the menthol? Stained teeth, black lungs, and all. Our j and came for poor communities, specifically in the 1960s. Targeted people who are still affected disproportionately. Please, pass out those cancer sticks from a white van, toxic then and now, only then it wasn't some pedo clown. Enticing little black kids, it was tobacco with menthol. And 48, 40 years it took to outlaw. Lawsuits couldn't stop a billion dollar industry, black victims expendable friendly fire to healthcare disparities but we roll it up light it up inhale and here we are i ain't never been a virginia slim nor a cool king i was warned not to try those addictive things and i didn't want to be no marble man next to me lighting a camel to rescue me i thought that i thought i was too pretty to be a tobacco queen and a moment of silence for those 90s and tobacco fiends coolies and boolers not like slick rick but cocaine lace cancer sticks that made zombies out of black youth who thought smoking was so cool because rj and morris made it look so smooth and this is a children's story a cautionary tale. Tobacco ain't nothing but legal crack and once started hard to step back. I wonder what vaping will bring. Probably more of the same thing. Their generational wealth sealed our generational health. But still we roll it up. Right. Light it up. Yeah. Inhale. Roll it up. Light it up. Inhale. Now watch your health fail. Yes, yes. And it doesn't matter that if the tobacco and I'm going to say it, I don't care. I got enough for it. I don't care what the tobacco industry sponsors. I don't care if they sponsor the Black and Puerto Rican Caucus Weekend. Y'all know that? Y'all know that? Y'all know that? Yeah. All money ain't good money. And so we have to expose this deceiver and this liar. And we have to educate and liberate our leaders so that they will stand on the right side of our people and not promote the killer, but protect us from the killer. So, menthol, I'm sorry. You should have got somebody else to do the eulogy if you wanted someone to say something good about you. We have this demon on the left. See, they wouldn't do all these things to push back against this movement if it wasn't hitting us. If they wouldn't do anything, if they knew that it didn't already work in California, it didn't already work in Massachusetts, it didn't, even, it didn't already work in Canada, it didn't already work in the European Union. And it's gonna work here. So stay encouraged. I ain't got nothing good to say about that. But I got everything good to say about you. We are here because we love you. And we don't want any of your loved ones to be added to that number of the number one killer of our people. God bless you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's give another round of applause. Yeah. I want to thank you all for coming out. I want to thank you for sharing your words of expression. 
Uh, we're going to be here for a little while with DJ Mawata. Let's give DJ Mawata a round of applause and Chanel, my brother Sherman over here as well, doing the videography, and also all of you. Um, I know that my name was mentioned several times throughout this morning and this early part of the afternoon. However, I cannot do this work alone. It takes a community. You know, it takes a group of committed people, you know, to stand shoulder to shoulder, side by side. I'm gonna ask those who are uh, who have been involved with my uh, tobacco action group team members, if you all can come up, you know, that would be great. Come on, don't be shy, don't be shy, don't be shy, don't be shy, don't be shy. Come on down. We're not getting baptized or anything right now. <laughs> Just come on down, come on down. <laughs> you know, yeah, we got Dr. Lawson and uh, Jason, come on, Jason. Come on, Jason. Yeah, yeah. Out here, you know, and you all might see my face quite often when hear my name. These are individuals who have given their time, you know, their, their, their services. Alicia, come on up here, Alicia. Come on, come on. I'm calling you out. Yes, Alicia, I know you, you just joined. You're in the mix. All right. You know, these are people who are volunteered their time, their energy, volunteer their time, and their energy, their expertise. All right, to be a part of something much larger than themselves, and we all collectively, you know, are a part of something much larger than ourselves. My friend John came all the way down from Allegheny County. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, Amanda. We've been side by side and shoulder with me ever since you know, she, uh, her, and I met. You know, obviously Waffle and just all of you. you know, my good friend Tanya, and you know, it's just it, it, it means so much. You know, and I can't forget Jessica. You know, and you know the Erie County Department of Health and D. Just, you know, AJ, you know, in terms of helping those who need to get screened for lung cancer. Gia, and what she's doing with community engagement and, you know, helping to, you know, reduce access to uh, tobacco products in communities and stores. And it's just, the list goes on and on. And Ebony, it just, I'm just thankful for all of you. You know, I got the Nicholas brothers here, you know, they were going to do the music, my brothers. <laughs> you know, they on standby, they ready, you know, ready to jump in. And everybody, everybody ready to do what they can do. Whether it's five minutes, ten minutes, whatever it is, people are just ready for change, ready to do something different. And we are a part of that change, we're a part of that difference. And they know that we're a part of that difference. So, we're asking them, is it in you? to do right by this community. Because we're gonna hold you accountable. We're gonna hold you responsible. And more importantly, we're gonna liberate ourselves from this from this deadly demon that Pastor Nichols was just talking about. Away until we go. Yeah, they trying to take us away. They trying to take us away. They trying to smoke us away until we go. 85% black. Menthol smokers, you tell me that. Because we're being targeted. That's a fact. 8 billion and 2014 on advertisement. Think about it. Hmm. We've been under.